Good morning, everyone. So, welcome again to my virtual classroom. So, for today, uh, we're going to be continuing discussing the language of mathematics, but this time we're going to explore more on the statements, the different statements. So, before I proceed, so let us go back first. Few uh, reviews of our past uh, discussion and my video lesson number one. Okay, so language of mathematics, we define it again as a complex system of words and symbols, either spoken or written, used by a particular community as a means of communication. In mathematics, we usually use uh, numbers and symbols to communicate whatever the concepts that we, we want you to understand. Okay, so mathematical symbols, few. Okay, there are several symbols. Iilan lang ta sa mga symbols na commonly used. So you can explore more on different mathematical symbols. So I've discussed this uh, on my last video lesson. So these are usually used in mathematics. Then last time, I also discussed with you the characteristics of mathematics language. So number one, we have precise. Able to make very fine distinction. So the language of math is precise. And concise. Okay, able to say things briefly because of the symbols. Okay, so and of course, powerful. So when we speak of powerful, a mathematics language able to express complex thoughts with, of course, a relative is because of this example of uh, the language of math is the creation of the formulas and, and others. Okay, so this time I will try to check whether uh, on my previous video, you research or you go back to your algebra uh, translating or reviewing the translation of mathematics into English statements. So I have here this symbol. So 5 times the quantity x plus 8. So if you're going to translate this in English, so what could be the translation? So I will give you 5 seconds. Okay, are you ready? So go timer starts now okay let me see if you really uh, if you really uh, translate this uh, number and symbols okay the correct answer is will you please check your uh, your work okay five times the sum of a number and eight. Okay, so the sum of a number means this one, uh, the number inside the parenthesis. We have x plus 8. So the sum of a number and 8. And then we multiply it by 5. You can also uh, try other translation. Okay, say for example, a number increased by 8, then multiplied by 5. So it's, it's up to you. It's up to you. But make sure that it's correct. Okay? There are several ways, but uh, you make sure that it's correct. Okay, next. Another 5 seconds for this. 5x plus 15. How are we going to translate this in uh, English language or English statement? Rather, I'll give you 5 seconds. Go. Timer starts now. Okay, let me see your answer. Okay, this is a very simple statement using the language of math. So let me see. Okay, the sum of 5 times a number and 15. So the sum of 5 times a number and 15. So since uh, the, main, uh, the main operations is plus or sum, so we get the sum of 5x and 15. So x is x represents a number so 5 times a number and 15 so we get the sum of 5 times a number and 15 okay and 15 so usually n means plus okay so this is just a review of your algebra in high school another five seconds for this example this time given an english statement then you are going to translate this into uh, mathematical statement or algebraic statement. So cube of a number is less than 10. Again, I repeat, cube of a number is less than 10. So what could be is your answer to this? 
So I'll give you five seconds. Okay, go. Timer, timer starts now. Okay, the correct answer is 10 minus n cubed. So maybe some of you uh, wrote n cubed minus 10. There's a specific difference or just a difference between cube of a number less 10. Again, I repeat. There's a difference between cube of a number less 10. And cube of a number is different from cube of a number is less than 10 to cube of a number less 10. So that's why the answer here is 10 minus n cubed. Okay? Next. What about this one? This time, uh, you are to translate this again in English. So, quantity A plus 15 all over 25. Again, A plus 15 all over 25. If you're going to write this in, uh, in an English uh, statement, so what could it be? So, I'll give you five seconds. Okay, time is up. So, I hope you get this one. So, the correct answer is the sum of a number and 15 divided by 25. Or, this could also be the quotient of the sum of a number and 15 and 25. So, if we're going to look at this, see, if we're going to compare, let's go back to our previous examples. You see, in English, it will... Uh, took you how many words but in mathematics this uh, the language or the expression is limited into few numbers or symbols only that's why if you're going back to the characteristics it might tell you that the three characteristics of mathematics language is true it's precise concise and powerful okay so this time let us go back okay to our main lesson so we have the kinds of mathematical statements okay what are these kinds of mathematical statements this is only a preview of your uh, lesson so most of the discovery or most of the examples of this uh, will be done by you so you're going to explore on the kinds of mathematical statements I will just give you some concepts so you have the idea okay so we have number one, universal statement. It says that a certain property is true for all elements in a set. So you have to take note of all elements. So it's universal. Universal statement, it's for all. Universal. All. Okay, example. All positive numbers are greater than zero. All positive numbers are greater than zero. It's true that all positive numbers are greater than zero. In an integer line or in an integer, those numbers going to the right of zero are all positive. And numbers going to the left or the or less than zero are negative. So that's why integers is composed of the negative, the zero, and the positive. And all positive numbers are said to be greater than zero. Okay? Next, another one is conditional statement. It says that if one thing is true, then some other things also has to be true. And if you're going to take note of a conditional statement, it is composed of if and then statement. Or if and then. These are the usual words, uh, these are the usual words used in a conditional statement. It says that if one thing is true, then some other things also has to be true. For example, if 378 is divisible by 18, then 378 is divisible by 6. If you happen to uh, meet this kind of word, so you can say that it's a conditional statement. It's true that 378 is divisible by 6 because if you're going to go back to the, vis the divisibility rule, it says that a number is divisible by 6 if it is divisible by 2 and 3. So therefore, 378 is divisible by 18 because it's also divisible by 6. Okay? 378 is divisible by 2 and at the same time, 378 is divisible by, by 3. So in your divisibility test, in your number theory, in elementary, so if you, if you still remember, 
Okay. Next we have, next statement we have existential statement. So uh, last time we have a uh, universal statement, conditional statement. Then we have the existential statement from the root word existence. Okay. There is at least one thing for which the property is true. Make uh, Take note of at least one thing for which the property is true. It's existential statement. Example, there's a prime number that is even. In a prime number, if you're going to, again, remember your, your number theory in elementary, all prime number, all prime numbers are actually odd numbers. But there is one thing, one prime number that is even. And that is number 2. Because as we define prime numbers, if you're going to go back again to your elementary math, prime numbers are numbers with factors 1 and itself. 1 and itself. And the smallest prime number is 2. And 2 is even. 2 is followed by 3, 5, uh, 7, and etc. Okay? So existential because there's at least one thing for which the property is true. Okay, next, we have universal conditional statements. Okay, universal conditional statements. So, it's already a mix of universal statement and conditional statement. So, let's see an example. This is a statement that is both universal and at the same time conditional. Okay, that is the definition of conditional, universal conditional statement. Example, for all animals... A, animal is, animals A is represent, animals is represent by A. If A is a dog, if that animal is a dog, then A is a mammal. Okay, do you understand what is mammal? Or do you know what's mammal? These are animals with, of course, mammary gland. Okay, so for all animals A, if A is a dog, then A is a mammal. So it's a combination of universal for all animals. And of course, the if and then statement for conditional okay i hope you understand next we have an example okay so rewrite if you're going to rewrite this for all animals a if a is a dog then a is a mammal to make it conditional in nature to make it conditional in nature explicitly but it is universal nature implicitly so this becomes okay if a is a dog then A is a mammal. This is conditional. This is conditional explicit. Okay? It's very evident naman na if and then statement siya. But, but then we remove for all animals because we, trans, uh, we translate this into conditional in nature. But then, if you're going to look at it, it, ha, it you can say that is, that is also universal. Okay? Or you can also say that if an animal is a dog, then the animal is a mammal. So this also conditional uh, in nature. If an animal is a dog, then the animal is a mammal. So see, if there are several ways to express uh, statements, okay? There are several ways to uh, express statements in mathematics. Okay, universal existen existential statement. So this means uh, the combination, okay? It is a statement that is universal because... It's, uh, its first part says that a certain property is true for all objects of a given type and it extends because its second part asserts the existence of something or there's at least one truth to it. Okay? Example, every real number has an additive inverse. Every real number has an additive inverse. We talked about uh, universality of real number. And of course, we talked about also of the existential as uh, existential nature of additive inverse. So that's mean, that means universal existential statement. Okay, for all real numbers of additive inverses, so let's rewrite this. For all real numbers R, so we can, uh, we can denote real numbers as R, there's an additive inverse for R. For all real numbers R, there's a real number S such that S in an additive inverse for R. Okay, so you can also rewrite this particular statement. 
existential universal statement. So existential universal. A while ago, it's universal, existential. This time, existential universal statement. This, it, this is a statement that is existential because its first part asserts that a certain object exists. And it is universal because its second part says that the object satisfies a certain property for all things of a certain kind. So that's the definition of existential universal. So we uh, we reverse a while ago universal existential, this time existential universal statement. Because the first part is existential. There is a positive integer that is less than or equal to every positive integer. So this is the statement. So if you're going to look at this statement, this denotes existential universal statement. There is a positive integer that is less than or equal to every positive integer. Okay, that's the example. Some positive integer is less than or equal to every positive integer. One point, there is a positive integer m that is less than or equal to every positive integer. So let's uh, dissect this statement. There is, according to the, uh, to the general statement, some positive integer, some positive integer is less than or equal to every positive integer. So there exists, okay, positive integer. That's why it's existential, sum, okay? There's a positive integer m that is less than or equal to every positive integer. So, there is a positive integer m such that every positive integer is greater than or equal to m. And this m represents our positive integer. So, we just interchange sum. We just, uh, we just uh, uh, what's this, rearrange some words but still it denotes existential universal so there are several ways of writing there is a positive integer m with a property that for all positive integers n m is less than or equal to n m is a positive integer positive integer that is less than or equal to every positive integer n so these are all examples of uh, statements okay mathematical statements so this is only a primer, so you can still uh, you can still research on the uh, the statements, the different kinds of statements in math. Okay, so with that, so thank you so much for uh, joining me in this virtual classroom, and thank you so much for watching this video. So I hope to see you guys next time. See you.